This video is one that many of you have asked for, an end-to-end -end look at my note-taking workflow. We've discussed bits and pieces of this on this channel from time to time, such as looking at taking literature notes, crafting permanent notes, but not a top-down overarching look of how all the pieces fit together. Hello folks, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Today we're going to take a look at my end-to-end -end note taking workflow, and hopefully you can find some good things out of this to add to your workflow as well. Now, if you are not super familiar with Obsidian, but you're interested in diving in to learn how to leverage that software for your benefit in taking notes, I recommend checking out our course at obsidianmadesimple.com. Obsidian Made Simple is designed to help you dive in, get familiar from beginner, intermediate, and advanced skills inside of Obsidian so that you can use it to take better notes for yourself. Okay, so you can see on my screen over here that I have a graph set up showing kind of the overarching view of my note-taking workflow. I primarily consume content from four different sources, the main one of which being books. So we have books, articles that I'm reading on the internet, which I'm trying to cut down on this year because books are vastly higher quality and information content I have found, podcasts, and videos. Kind of the overall process here, which I'll take a brief look at here too, is there's this capture or input phase. This is a phase where I'm finding sources. This is a phase where I'm consuming information. I'm taking notes on them. There's this intermediate phase here too called triage, where this is where I'm placing sources for later consumption or for placing them so that I can process them out. I maybe have consumed them, but I need to process the notes a little bit further so I can craft a true literature note. Then there's processing, which is where I'm transferring the notes from the capture and triage phases into Obsidian, my note-taking tool of choice. That is really the process where I'm crafting and creating literature notes. Lastly, then I'm taking those literature notes and I'm crafting them into more permanent notes. So where literature notes are my thoughts on a piece of literature or a piece of content that I'm consuming, a permanent note is something I'm pulling out of that that is something that is a strong opinion or a strong fact. Now let's head back to that graph and we can take a look at this overarching process and see some of the tools that I'm using in the workflow. So this graph is kind of simplified for the sake of visual appealing. I mean, you can see there's already some weird crossover arrows and stuff here. It's not the prettiest graph. And I've actually, if I was actually going to use my real workflow on this, it would be crossed all over the place because I don't follow this to a T. This is just more of a general idea. So I've got books, articles, podcasts, and videos that kind of come in. I'm consuming them. I'm listening to them. And some of them end up in this triage point here. So largely with articles or maybe videos that I want to take a look at later, or I need to come back to because I didn't have time to fully take a good look at taking a note or crafting thoughts or writing down my thoughts on those pieces. So those will tend to go into a triage bucket for holding later. The main tool I use here for this is Raindrop.io. It's really easy to clip in an article or a video and I'll show you that in just a second what that looks like. But basically what I'm doing is I'll clip it in there to either save it to read it for later or that I've already read it but want to come back to it and process it at a later point in time. I'm also using Kindle highlights for triaging information. What I'm doing is I just recently got a Kindle and I haven't been largely a fan of reading digital eBooks. But with the Kindle and the way that I'm processing books now and taking notes on them, it actually makes a lot of sense. I had a 10-year-old Kindle previously and then now recently upgraded to one of the newer Kindle Paperwhites, and it's a totally different experience when taking notes and trying to read a book. I no longer have to have my smartphone in one hand and a Kindle in the other to take notes on a book. I can just quickly and easily highlight and type right on the screen of the Kindle Paperwhite to add some thoughts to a passage. Generally, I don't like clipping quotes from books, but in this instance, when I'm using a tool later on, such as uh, Bookcision by Readwise to get those Kindle highlights into a plain text format, it's really easy to come back and kind of process through that to figure out what I want to craft into either a more specific literature note or a permanent note later on. 
Now, again, I mentioned this graph isn't entirely 100% accurate. Sometimes these triage items go directly into drafts. Sometimes raindrop goes into drafts. Sometimes Kindle goes into drafts. Sometimes these all go directly into Obsidian. It just depends on how I'm working. Now, if I'm working directly on my laptop, generally I'm reading an article or watching a video and I'll take notes directly inside of Obsidian. If I'm working on my iPad or my phone, I'll either save stuff to raindrop to come back to it later, or I will take notes in drafts so that I can transfer those over to my uh, Obsidian notes uh, when I'm back at the computer. I'm not a big fan of using like OneWriter or IA Writer on mobile to access and modify my Obsidian Vault. It just hasn't really clicked with me. Um, that's just me though. Those are great tools for accessing your vault. Your mileage might vary. So definitely recommend checking out those if you haven't already. So once information kind of makes it through this capture triage phase, it goes into processing where it's all funneling down into Obsidian. And it's at that point where I'm starting to craft the literature notes. And then from those literature notes to permanent notes. And then when I'm done crafting permanent notes, those end up published on my Obsidian publish site. I'll post a link in the description to my Obsidian publish site if you want to take a look at what might be out there for you. And just as an example of what a publish site can look like. So with that, let's hop over to some of these tools so you can see how I'm using them. The first one I want to take a look at today is raindrop.io. This is one that it's kind of similar to some other tools on the market. It's similar to Instapaper. It's similar to Pocket. But... I just find it kind of a fresh new take on that read it later style application. Uh, it's not super focused on having a reader view where all the text and images are removed. More so it's focused on easy ways to capture and organize stuff that you wanna save for later on the internet. There is a clipping button that you can use here, this little cloud icon. You just click on this when you're on an article and then you can save it directly into a folder or an unsorted bin here too um, to be able to put that information wherever you need it for later. I'm on the free plan right now because I don't see the need to have anything more on this tool because I'm just using it for quick capture and stuff to come back to in the future. It's not something I'm keeping anything for long-term storage by any means. Uh, and I've got three main folders here that I'm using. The first one here is read later. If I come across an article that I don't have time to read now or don't want to take the time to read it now, I will clip that article or video to my read later folder. This is great when I just have a couple minutes of downtime when I'm waiting in between things or something like that where I can pop open an article and just read through it without having to actually browse through the internet to open up things that I could potentially get myself distracted much further with. So once I'm done reading articles, or if I have an article that I've already read on the internet, but I don't have time to take formal or better notes on it right now, what I'll do is I'll save that in this process triage folder. The process triage folder is a list full of items that I need to come back to and grab the interesting information out of it. I've already read it. I've already skimmed through it. I've recognized that there's something about this article or this video that I want to capture into my system, my note-taking management system. And then I'll just run through these every once in a while periodically. As you can see, I've got a fair backlog here now. Uh, it's been kind of a busy season, so I haven't gotten to it. But basically with this is just kind of a nice triage place to be able to come back and process through things if I have a spare few minutes. The next tool I wanna to talk about briefly is Bookcision. Essentially what I use this for is when I have highlights or notes that I'm taking on Kindle, those get all loaded up onto Amazon's website, read.amazon.com. You can log in there and this is a bookmarklet that you can just click on when you're on that page where your Kindle highlights are up for a specific book. And this will generate a plain text version of those that you can copy and paste directly into Obsidian. As I mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of copying quotes. I would rather synthesize thoughts into my own words versus copying quotes from a book. I just find that to be a better way to take notes, whether I'm taking notes on a book, on a video, on a podcast, or in a class, or in a meeting. I need to be able to synthesize what I'm experiencing and hearing in a specific place from a specific resource, from a specific person, 
into my own words because ultimately that will help me be able to contextualize that information better for myself and kind of get a better sense of what is needed for myself in the future. If I'm just copying quotes or trying to take notes verbatim on what somebody is saying, uh, usually I'm losing context in that and I'm also not getting the information out of that. So one thing I'm doing in Kindle is every single time I highlight something in my Kindle book, there's a little button that pops up that says, take a note, uh, and I'll tap on that button and I'll type just a couple of sentences of a note to give myself some thoughts or to recontextualize that information into my own words. That's probably the most important thing I've learned about the note-taking process for myself is that for me to take effective notes, it's not about copying information, it's about contextualizing and processing it in my brain as I'm taking notes so that I can reframe that information in a way that is useful for me. Now, another essential tool in my workflow for taking notes is drafts, which I have up on the screen here. I generally don't use this on Mac OS. I primarily use this on my iPhone and my iPad for a quick scratch pad to take notes when I don't have access or don't want to access the broader repository of my notes. This is a great place to just write down thoughts and it's easy to come back to them and process them at a later point in time. You can see I have a couple of examples on the screen here. I've got uh, The Rise and Fall of Getting Things Done, which was a piece by Cal Newport in uh, The New Yorker, where he had some interesting things to say. I quoted an item here, which this was just done by clipping using the share sheet action. I highlighted a quote and shared it to drafts, which it automatically pulled the link to the article, the title of it, and the quote here. And then it just gives me an opportunity to kind of summarize that quote and say what is important to me about that, the information that I want to pull out of it. So here I said productivity systems should help us give structure to our lives, but get out of the way so that we can do the work. Again, this is me consuming a piece of information, condensing that and contextualizing it in my own head, and then taking the notes. This then integrated into some notes inside of my Obsidian vault, it integrated into some thoughts and works that I've done over on my podcast process. I did a whole episode on this article, which I'll put a link in the description or probably somewhere up over here if you're interested in taking a look at that too. The other thing I tend to capture in here is book notes. And I've discussed this a little bit in the past and other videos, but basically when I take a book, I'm just writing down thoughts as something sparks interest in me. So this was from Einstein's biography by Walter Isaacson. Basically what I do is I will just say if I, a fact is interesting to me or something sparks a thought about another topic, I write that down. If I'm reading a paper book, it's always going to be in drafts. If I'm reading a Kindle book, though, it's always going to be probably in the Kindle because I hate having to hold two devices at one time to do something. It's just not helpful, especially if you're laying in bed trying to read or something like that. But that's the process, essentially, is I'm reading the book. If something captures me or is interesting, then I write that sentence down. So that's essentially how I'm capturing and kind of halfway processing information. I'm either writing directly into drafts about an article or a book or podcast that I'm consuming. I am clipping something into Raindrop. But then where does it go from there? Well, it needs to migrate its way into Obsidian because that's where all of these things belong. Let's take a look at my process for getting those pieces of information into Obsidian and what I'm doing in there. So Obsidian is the main place where work happens on this information that I'm capturing from the outside. Something's caught my attention about it and I need to get it integrated into my system somehow. Okay, so how I'm doing that is I'm relatively just copy pasting in from drafts or I'm taking notes directly in here from Raindrop or even just directly consuming an article if I'm sitting at my computer. On the screen is an example of a book, Hyperfocus by Chris Bailey, to kind of give you an idea of how I process through book notes. This is one that I've taken notes on in my Kindle. It's kind of a different way that I had taken notes, um, but basically what it is, I highlighted items here, and then I have at the top, I have some metadata that I add to every literature note. So I have the author, was Chris Bailey, which is a nice link to that person because there are multiple books that Chris Bailey has written, multiple articles that I have linked in here. Uh, the type, which helps me organize this note and find it a little bit more easily. This is a book note, 
and a literature note. So it's a book note is a type of literature note. And I just make sure that I have that tagged appropriately because then I can easily search for and navigate to this. Then I have topics. I've got productivity, deep work, focus, and creativity. Having topics linked here is important, I think, because it allows you to easily gain insight as to what different books or resources or permanent notes are all related together to the same overarching topics. When you can start to browse through by topic, you can gain access and see connections between different kinds of notes much more easily than just trying to say, well, I've got Deep Work by Cal Newport and Hyperfocus over here. I know they're kind of the same, but you have to mentally maintain that connection. It's better to get it out into the software like we have here in this note. So what I've kind of done here is I've just copied in the highlights. And as I'm scrolling down here, you can see I have a few uh, words that are highlighted here or linked. I don't do that as much anymore. So what I did here is largely I just went in and I just started looking for quotes that made sense to me. Now, this was before I was taking notes on books on my Kindle in a way where I was synthesizing thoughts as I went on. So what I did in this instance is I just kind of found quotes that kind of sparked thoughts to me. So in this instance, Bailey is stating that he started to notice his own increased distraction, especially as he owned more devices. Uh, and that had essentially caused him to feel busy. And that was a thought that connected with me here. And so I just added a little note here at the bottom that said, distraction is the ultimate feeling of being busy. I'll open this one for a second here. And you can see that this is a permanent note. This is a strong opinion or a strong fact that I pulled that's related to that information that I was consuming out of the book Hyperfocus. And so I have a reference down here to the book Hyperfocus, which is where it was sourced from or that it was inspired by. I've tagged it as a type permanent note so I can easily find these within my uh, Zettelkasten, my uh, Obsidian uh, software. And then under topics, I have distraction and focus because those are the main topics that this particular permanent note covers. So you can see I say, distraction is the ultimate feeling of being busy, but getting absolutely nothing done. I believe this is the reason why so many of us are disconnected and overwhelmed all the time. We feel as though our lives are jam-packed full, but instead we're distracted 80% of the time and truly busy the other 20%. Strong opinion or strong fact. That's what I pulled out of this one. Here's another book note, that one that we just looked at inside of drafts from Einstein, His Life and Universe, the biography by Walter Isaacson. You can see I have the same metadata up here, author, type, and topics. I put a title here of the book. And then this is a little different from the other note because this is a note that I took notes on inside of drafts. It was a paper book that I was reading. reading. It wasn't a Kindle book. So I'm not copying quotes from that because frankly, it's just too much work to do that. Uh, but what I did do is I summarized things that I found were interesting in a few words, in my own words. Then from there, as I came in and processed this note at a later point in time, uh, what I did was I just kind of found statements that were interesting and I wiki linked them into a permanent or more evergreen style note. So this one here, educational success comes from stimulating imagination and creativity, not rote learning is something that I need to come back and fill out. It is something that I'm interested in crafting a permanent note on. But when I was processing this note, I didn't have time to do it, or it just ne wasn't necessarily sparking things. So let's take a second to talk about that for a little bit. How do I handle the process of crafting these notes inside of my vault? Well, first I'll show you how I start by creating a literature note. I'll just take command end here. Let's say I want to uh, take notes on the book Range by David Epstein. Okay, so I have a blank note here. One of the things that I've done inside of my vault is I've created templates for both literature notes and permanent notes so that I don't have to remember the structure of creating those notes in the future. So I'll just type command L because I have it shortcutted there. I'll go to my literature note template and I can start filling in the information. David Epstein, it's a literature note, it's a book. And then a topic is specialization, generalists, and so on. I'll put the name here, range. And then 
there are a couple of different things I can do. If this is a Kindle book, then I'll just go to my Kindle page. I'll use the Bookcision bookmarklet to grab those Kindle highlights and I'll just paste them into here. If it's a paper book and I've taken notes on it inside of drafts, then what I'll do is I'll copy those notes into here. In this case, range is a book that I read before I was taking this note taking methodology into account. And so I've got it sitting on my shelf over here. And what I need to do is I need to flip through the pages, find underlines, and then synthesize those thoughts directly into Obsidian here in the future. I'm not gonna do that today in this video because we've done videos on that process in the past, but that's generally the idea of how I craft a literature note. When I'm done crafting that literature note and I don't have time to start creating permanent notes from that, what I will do is I will then tag that note to process. That just gives me a nice queue of notes that I need to come back to. They're captured into my system, but I need to develop them into more permanent notes because then it becomes more useful to me. The literature note is a great place to capture and store information from a specific piece of literature. It's a great way to get back to that piece of information if say you're using it for, I don't know, writing a podcast script or a video script, potentially using that information in a paper at some point in the future. It's good to get back to the source if you need to cite it at some point in time. But the usefulness comes into developing atomic permanent notes and to be able to mix those ideas up so they can communicate, I guess, in one sense or the other together. So atomic, what does that mean? Is that, that means that a note is focused specifically on the smallest conceptual topic possible. So for example, that note that we took a look at briefly with uh, from Chris Bailey's hyperfocus about distraction, that was as far down as I could whittle it at the time. Maybe I can go down a little bit further in the future, maybe it'll stay the same. But for me, that was the smallest concept that I could store in a note as possible. That is essentially the definition of a permanent note, a strong opinion or a strong fact in the smallest conceptual package possible. So here's another book that I'm in the middle of processing, Deep Work by Cal Newport. I read it a long time ago, but I need to go back through and process this into permanent notes. And again, similar to how I handled hyperfocus, I've done the same thing here. I've found a quote, something that caught my interest about it, and then I'm crafting a permanent note out of it. Solitude is required to think creatively. You can see here, I've created a permanent note out of this, and I've linked other permanent notes out of it as well. So to think from a big picture perspective or to gain creative clarity on a problem or project, you must first be able to give it your undivided attention. This attention allows you to clearly define your problem, which is essential see this note here. Now, this is another thing too when you're crafting permanent notes is that if that note sparks an idea about another note in your system, link to it. That's the beauty of it. So here I have this note, spend just as much time clarifying your problem as you do working on solving it. If you command click on that, you can see the note that I have here and it's even linked to other notes. So if you keep traveling through your note-taking system, you can find some pretty interesting connections. So as you can see here, I have directly correlated and connected solitude with the ability to solve problems. And solitude, as defined by Cal Newport in Deep Work, is really just the freedom of your mind from outside inputs. Uh, which is also something that I crafted from this note as well. From there, I'm assigning these notes to be published out to Obsidian Publish. Again, I'll have a link in the show notes, the description below, if you're interested in taking a look at what my Obsidian Publish site looks like. But that's generally it. Now, remember that note-taking like this is a completely iterative process. Make it the most simple that you can. Don't worry about getting all of the notes perfect up front, get everything crafted and organized in the most perfect way. That can happen later. If you're finding friction at some points or you're having difficulty doing something inside of your system, then take the time to try to figure out how you can solve that problem. But to start off with, the best thing to do is to just start taking notes. Start grabbing ideas from videos or articles or books that you're reading, noting them down, organizing them in a literature note, and then try to craft those into permanent notes. You can share those with other people if you want, you can keep them for yourself, 
but I find high value in doing this for any person who works in a knowledge work field. And here's why. The ability to connect information together from different fields of study, from different walks of life, from different areas, even completely different topics, can help you make better connections and give you a broader picture to solve problems better in the field that you're in. So whether you're a doctor, a nurse, whether you're a computer scientist, or whether you're just someone who's sitting at a desk crunching numbers or working through projects in a big corporation, it doesn't really matter. You can find value in taking notes like this yourself too. Well, that wraps things up for today's video. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, I wanna hear in the comments below. Also hit that subscribe button too. If you wanna follow along more with what's going on inside of our community at Effective Remote Work, be sure to join our Discord. There's a link in the description below as well for that. Again, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.